Hi guys, welcome back. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and now my voice sounds a little raspy, which sometimes I actually like that. It is because I am getting over a little bit of a cold. I just had like a minor cold, and it actually really affected my voice for some reason. Today's video is a new DIY video, but today we are focusing just on throw pillows, because almost every time I feature a throw pillow in one of my DIY videos, everyone's like, please do more throw pillows, please do more throw pillows. And I personally cannot even complain about that, because I am like a throw pillow addict. Like, I love changing them up. I think it's such an easy way to like just freshen up a room spice up a room give it a little bit more decor or even add like little bits of color here and there to your room and so today this video is packed with throw pillow DIYs and the great thing is that they're all no so they're all super simple but they're also really really expensive and nice looking they look like they could be purchased at like an anthropology or an urban or just something very trendy upscale we're making them for a nice affordable price point which we all love here on the channel but before jumping in I am so excited because today's video is actually in partnership with Skillshare which I have seen so many people talk about Skillshare before and it's always been a platform I've wanted to try and I've finally tried it and I'm obsessed with it which is why I wanted to share it with you guys. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and so much more. I actually was scrolling through there for the past couple of days and just taking some of the classes. They have things on how to take better photos, how to take Instagram photos, how to edit on Premiere, how to edit on Final Cut. There's so many classes on this website that just teach you how to be a better content creator or a better business owner. So I personally love the fact that they have a lot of different camera classes, a lot of illustrator classes. Skillshare is a perfect place to just keep you learning and thriving in your career or your job or your hobby, whatever it might be. But they also were amazing and hooked you guys up. And the first 500 people that actually sign up using the link below, which I'll put in the description box, gets a two month free membership, which is amazing. You get two full months of free to take whatever classes you want, which is so good. And then after that, a premium membership is only $10 a month. So you're still gonna get a ton of information for such a low price each month. I'd highly recommend Skillshare. I think you guys are going to love it. Pillows are just my life. Like, I'm sorry. They, they are just my life. So let's get started. So to start off the first pillow, we are using some gray felt and I got this at the fabric store. Super inexpensive, like $4 for a half yard, which is what I use. And I ended up cutting a total of 36 strips of one by 18 inch felt. So Basically, we're cutting these because we're going to be creating a basket woven look on the front of the pillow, which looks so chic and fresh. It kind of reminds me of a CB2 pillow that's like $85, but we're literally recreating this pillow for under $10, which is absolutely amazing. So just go along the edge with your ruler, trace these out, and don't worry if you're using like a thick marker or something because these marker edges can actually go on the back side. We'll just use the opposite side when we actually go to the weaving portion. So I got these plain white pillowcases on Amazon. I'll link the exact ones below. I just thought it was a lot easier than making my own. And they're also like a couple dollars each, not too bad at all. And I went across the whole side on, um, this is like the starting edge. And I laid down my one inch strips all the way down the whole uh, starting edge. Let that dry for a little bit and then we could start the basket weaving process. So basically basket weaving is super easy. All you do is lift up every other strand, insert a new piece, uh, which is just one of our strips that we pre-cut, and then you flip them up the opposite way. So then I went in with my opposite strands, flipped up every other one, and then laid down again another strip just to fill in the gap. And this is just a repetitive process all the way down. It's super simple, honestly, you guys. Just make sure everything's really tight and nice and neat and you are good to go. It's very simple. Um, you just complete the process all the way until you reach the bottom edge of the pillow. And then once you reach the bottom, you can kind of adjust the edges if you need to. And then what you're gonna go into doing is just gluing this down onto the actual pillow base. So I use Fabri-Tac adhesive, and if you've never used this before, it's literally like a liquid seam. You can even wash materials after this is completely dry. It's amazing. I get it at Michael's. Um, it's a couple dollars with a coupon, so it's very much really worth it as opposed to having to sew. And I just went all the way around and made sure there was a lot of glue on all the edges, and then also went back and added glue to any edge that just needed to be tacked down a little bit more. And then once are completely done gluing it down and letting it dry. You can flip it over, use a good pair of scissors to cut off the excess around the edge, and that is your felt woven pillow. Yes, 
So this next pillow is inspired by anthropology and I used some assorted laces, some yarn, and then a little bit of rope that I found at the craft store. And again, just one of my simple white pillowcases from Amazon. And what I started off by doing was actually creating some tassels. I created a total of, I believe 12 tassels and it's super simple on how to create these. I just used a nice thick yarn and I wrapped it around the top edge of my hand to kind of get it at the thickest point of my hand. And then once you wrap it around the top edge of your hand, you can cut off the excess with a pair of scissors, gather it in the center and just kind of hold it there. And then you can lay it over the top of a smaller piece of yarn, tie it in a knot. And then once that's all tied, just cut all the loops so that they're their own little pieces of fringe. And you have a little tiny puff ball pom-pom. You are then gonna wanna go in and just glue down your laces. And the fun thing about this project is that you can be totally creative your own way. Like feel free to add as many different laces as you want, as many different textures, textiles, whatever it might be, different fabrics, um, different 3D elements like pom-poms. You could fill a whole pillow with these pom-poms, maybe reverse the colors of them, use yarn with multiple colors. You can just be so creative, but I really wanted to create sort of that very natural anthropology, just like Urban Outfitters vibe with this pillow. So then I went in and I added a little bit more lace to that center section, just a flat lace. I added three total strands of that all the way down the center. And then on the left and the right side, I also decided to add a little bit of this like natural cording. I just made all my colors coordinate, which I thought, thought just in the end kind of gave it a little bit more of a cohesive look and made it look a little bit more expensive than it actually was. And down the center, I added two little strips of yarn that we use for the pom-poms just to kind of finish off that area. And I also added a little strip to both the bottom and the top of it because I thought this really added a like finished off edge look, um, which overall just made the pillow look a little bit more expensive as well. And when you're completely done you can cut off all the lace on both sides flip it over and you're good to go Okay, so I had to make this pillow in this video because you guys always ask me about where my high pillow is from in my bedroom. And it's actually a Target pillow that's been recently discontinued. So I thought I would recreate it today, but put a little bit of a spin on it. So I'm starting off with two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper. And I'm using a pencil just to create the letter H on one paper and the letter I on the other paper because I want them to be very, very large. I just did this so I saved ink. But if you want to, you can go to your printer and print out a large letter H and a large letter I as a template. But I just felt comfortable with drawing each of them out. So that's what I did on the piece of paper. And this is just going to be a nice little template for when we actually use our felt. So I have my felt here. And what I'm doing is I'm using my fabric scissors to cut around the letter H template. But I do actually suggest maybe pinning down the actual template to the felt. So I just used a couple of sewing needles that I had just to pin it down and hold it in place so it wasn't moving because I felt that the felt was moving way too much and creating a little bit of a wonky shape, which is not what we wanted. We want a nice clean letter H. So I'm cutting out the interior as well and then I'm gonna move over to the letter I and cut out the letter I as well you're gonna need the um, little dot on the top and the bottom portion and then once you have those completely done we're using a plain white pillowcase again and I'm just using a tiny bit of glue on this just to sort of lock it in place for when we actually go to sew it down and yes we are hand sewing this down but don't worry it took me about 15 minutes for both the letters super easy and simple I'm just using a sharp sewing needle and some embroidery floss and I'm just going in and out very rarely randomly and very sporadically just to create that handmade element. This really adds a nice quirky touch to the pillow, I think, as opposed to just leaving it like the letter high. This definitely gives it that handmade vibe and looks like something that was handcrafted for your bedroom, which I think looks really nice and um, very urban or anthro inspired for sure. So I went around all the way um, on the letter H and I went around the letter I as well to finish off this pillow. And once you're done with the embroidery, that is your finished up pillow. So next up, we're creating a modernized tie-dye pillow, and I absolutely love the outcome of this pillow. I think it's perfect for like any beach house for sure, or just if you like the vibe in general. So what I'm starting off by doing is taking some muslin, cutting it down to like a rough 18 by 18 shape with a little excess, and then I'm grabbing it from the center point and then just kind of pulling all the excess down and using rubber bands just to band off every about an inch or inch and a half section until you reach the very bottom portion of the um, little piece of muslin fabric. So wherever there's a rubber band, essentially the ink is not going to grab into. So what I'm doing
doing is I got this little trash bin that I decided to use as a bucket and I used hot water with some of my indigo dye I got at the craft store. I only used about a third of it, so you have a lot more for the project as well. Just mix it up and dip in your little tie dyed piece. You can actually do the pillowcase itself if you wanted to, but I just wanted to do an actual piece of muslin fabric to see how it worked out, just so I didn't ruin a pillowcase in case it didn't come out how I wanted it to. And the muslin looked amazing when I took off the rubber band. So I just took off all the rubber bands after dabbing it with a little bit of paper towel just to make sure that it was um, not as like dripping wet as it would have been if I didn't do that. And I opened it up and it looked so, so good. So you guys can actually do so many different tie-dye methods to make so many different types of tie-dye. But I thought this circle was really graphic and um, bold. It would look so amazing on a couch. So I just glued this muslin down to a plain white pillowcase, flipped it over, cut off all the excess along the edges and that finishes off this little modernized tie-dye pillow. And for the last pillow, we are starting off with a lip bleach in a bowl and I'm actually using like an old dish scrubber that we we're going to throw away to apply the bleach. I just cleaned it really well because I figured I might as well just repurpose it prior to tossing it in the trash. So I'm applying a good layer of bleach across this whole fabric because I really want to lighten the color of this denim. I got a little snippet of denim like this at the fabric store for $2. Now I thought that I would have enough for the full pillow. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about, but I didn't have enough. So if you are going to do this, I highly suggest getting like a half yard or something, but just let this denim denim lighten as long as possible because you're going to want it to get to a good nice light shade because that original denim shade is not my favorite but if it is then feel free to do it i'm cutting out a little hexagon shape by folding a piece of paper in half and then creating half of a hexagon on the piece of paper and then cutting it out to when you open it it's going to be sort of this oblong hexagon shape and i didn't have any rhyme or reason to creating the shape i just thought that um it looked nice and i liked the size of it so then what i did was flip my denim fabric over and i traced this shape and used it as a template to go across the entire backside of the denim fabric and to sort of puzzle piece this in wherever it fit because these are going to be a uh, new little sort of like quilting squares that we're going to be using on the front of our pillow to just kind of create a more bold graphic print so you're going to cut all of these out across your entire piece of fabric And once they're all cut out, you can kind of place them out how you want them to be. I found out I didn't have enough to cover the entire pillow, but I did have enough to create this sort of vertical stripe down the front of the pillow. So I used my Fabri-Tac adhesive again and just glued these down. And I love the way that it looks. This pillow really reminds me of a handmade like anthropology pillow that you'd see that they weren't actually selling. It was just like on display. So I like this method. I thought it was fun. It's interesting. Um, but if you do the full pillow, I think it would look even more pretty. So this finishes off the last one. Good. I'm actually so excited to start styling them in my bedroom and my living room I'm doing a living room transformation right now for the channel and some of these pillows are gonna look so incredibly amazing in the living room I'm so pleased with how they turn out and let me know in the comment section below which one was your favorite I'd love to know and that was my video for today I hope that you guys really did enjoy it Don't forget to subscribe to Lone Fox for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week And if you would like your daily dose of DIY feel free to follow Lone Fox home on Instagram And if you want your daily dose of Drew me follow my personal Instagram if I'm Drew Scott where I share like my outfits and all that fun stuff. But without further ado, and that's really all for today's video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. Um, it gave you some insight. Maybe you want to sign up for Skillshare. Um, I think it's a great platform to do so. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye guys.